Welcome to Figure Feedback. My name is Jeremy. So let's talk about resin. There is a new resin that Hey Gears has come out with in the month of August, and it is called PAH10, and the color is black. They sent me over a bottle of it, and I've been using it. I'm going to tell you what my experience has been like with this particular resin. Now, this resin is not described as something that uh, the primary use is for, like miniatures and statues and stuff like that. This is more of an engineering resin, a more of a functional part creating resin. And just so I don't get anything wrong, just a few little stats here about this resin. It is a high temperature resistant and a rigid resin with a heat deflection temperature of 89 degrees Celsius. They say that this type of resin is going to be good and tough and accurate and is going to be best used for construction parts, fixtures for silicone mold making, component enclosures, accessories, etc, etc. And then they also compared it to this resin that Form Labs uses called their Rigid 4000 and this is a resin that costs like over $200 a bottle and they're saying that this resin this pH 10 resin is going to be a very low cost alternative compared to that now as of right now I don't know how much this resin is going to cost or the exact release date from when I'm recording this video but if I find that out before I release this video I'll put it on the screen or you can just check the description below and then I'll have some details down there for you as well. Hey, sorry to interrupt, but I got some pricing information to share with you. So the PAH10 resin is going to sell for $99 for a one kilogram bottle. And then also Hey Gears is doing this summer sale from August the 7th to the 21st, and they have a lot of their products on sale, including the original Ultracraft Reflex RS. And that price is going to be $799 down from the original $999. And if you want that printer and you want to get an additional $50 off, that will bring the price down to $749, then you can use the promo code figure feedback when you check out and it'll give you that $50 discount. And the link to all that good stuff will be down in the description. So before I show you some of the things that I printed with this resin, I'm going to share with you what my first experience was like using it. Now, the thing about Hay Gears resins when they're used in Hay Gears printers is that the profiles are usually tuned to be quite good, meaning that you don't have to worry about any of the settings for exposure times and speeds and lifts and all that stuff because they take care of all of it. All you do is slice your file, send it to the printer, let it print, and then everything is going to be fine. That has usually been my experience with Hager's resins. But when it comes to this PAH10 resin, something happened that really hasn't happened before with the resins in that it was quite difficult to remove it from the build plate. Those initial base layers were just really, really tough to remove on the build plate. And I was taking that scraper and I was just scraping away. And I hate having to do that because that is very dangerous. If that scraper slips and it's facing the wrong direction, it could stab you. It could cut you and you got resin all on it. And that is not a good thing. Which is why I think moving forward we should really push for manufacturers of resin 3D printers to just have easy, quick release build plates so that we can just eliminate that whole scraping thing altogether. Just twist or turn or whatever and just pop those prints right off. Now, the actual supports that were attached to my parts, they were just fine. It was just those initial base layers. So what I did is I went to the Blueprint Studio Slicer and I put in a ticket for Hey Gears for help to tell them what happened and ask them what can I do to make these rafts come off the build plate easier and they told me what I can do is go to the printer itself and there is a raft adhesion setting and they told me to just decrease that by 10 percent and then try again and see how it works out and generally that's what you would do decrease that raft adhesion on the printer by 10 percent each time until you get a result that's good for you so that's what I did. It was sitting right in the middle at default. And then I pushed it down by 10%, started another print. And that time, things came off the build plate a lot easier. So if you ever have trouble with that and you have a Hay Gears printer, just go to that setting and decrease it by 10%. And then everything should be much better from that point. 
So like I said, I wanted to print things that were more functional. So the first thing I decided to do was print this enclosure for the Panda Nomi, which is an accessory that you can put on the Bamboo Lab A1 and A1 Mini just to give yourself a second screen that has some funny, cute things on it, like GIFs that will respond to whatever the printer is doing. So I found a case on Maker World and I decided to print that out. And here is what that case looks like. It came in a couple of pieces, the front piece, and then there is a rear piece that just connects to the X axis on the uh, printer itself. And then I put everything together and here is what it looks like with the Pandanomi inside. Here is the rear of it. I still have it plugged in. And so the rear part just snap fit directly into the front plate here. And then from this point, you can just attach it to um, the spot where the X axis motor housing would be. And that worked out pretty good. Now we'll show you that in action, but unfortunately my Pandanomi screen is broken um, because, well, I just accidentally broke it one day, but it's still around and I wanted to see if it would fit inside of the housing and it still does. It fits in the housing. You have still have access to the connector for plugging it in to the back of this and then the other end plug into the back of the printer. And you also have access to the USB-C port as well if you wanted to plug that into the computer so everything everything worked out just fine and it is a good perfect fit and it is nice and snug so that was the first thing that i wanted to print with this the second thing that i wanted to print was a replacement back cover for one of my remote controls. So I have various Roku TVs here, and you know with those remotes, there's so many different variants of it depending on the manufacturer of the television and all that stuff. And the one that I have, it lost its little tab, so you know, it has to be held together with tape. So I just tried to find a remote control back that might fit, and I found a couple of variants of it, and I decided to print these out with the resin. And here's a look at how these turned out as well. These turned out looking very, very good. And the thing about this particular resin is it feels like plastic almost. Here's the inside of it. Still got some support marks in there. You know, I didn't do any post-processing, but they feel and even sound like plastic. Now, unfortunately, uh, neither of these fit. I almost got it close with this one. It almost fits, but it's just a little bit too big. The tab fits, but uh, you know, the this perimeter is just too wide for my remote. But I still wanted to keep these around for some further testing, like when it comes to heat. But until then, you know, just this here, this is made of resin and I'm just, tossing it around. After I was done with that, I wanted to print an enclosure for another BQ product for the Bamboo Lab A1, and that is the Panda Branch. It is an accessory that allows you to connect more things to the Bamboo Lab A1, like uh, LED lights or just something like that. And you can utilize different ports like USB ports on here. And then there's those other um, ports like where the AMS will connect to. It escapes me exactly what that's called, but it comes just like this with all the components just kind of naked right here on this board. And they have an official enclosure that you can print out. And this time I decided to just use this resin because that's one of the things that you are supposed to use this for is for, you know, enclosing electronic parts, things like that. And it came with these two pieces here and check out the text here on the front part of this case that I hope that you can kind of make out in the right light that tells you uh, Big Tree Tech, you got the logo there, and then you also have the specifications for where each of these uh, openings correspond to. You see it says out right here. We got 24 volts like right there. And yeah, just anyway, the, the text came out really good, really sharp, really clean. But the most important thing is just going to be the fit, you know, how properly does this fit? 
and it fits really well. I already had it in the case and I took it out, but now see there's the top part, fits just fine. And then we'll just uh, fix the bottom to this. And it snaps in place for the most part. And then I just have to take a couple of screws that came with this and just screw it into here in order to really clasp everything down. And then I'm able to take this and using another accessory that I printed out, but I printed that in filament, I can attach it to the printer using that other bracket piece. But the clearance is really good. I mean, you can just plug USB ports in here and it's just, it's just a nice, perfect fit. Everything lines up really good. And like I said, said that text came out looking very, very nice as well. Another accessory that I printed out from my Insta360 ONE X2 is a little case here that will allow me to connect this to my GoPro chest mount so that I can use this camera in that GoPro chest mount. And this is how it came out all in one piece. See, it's nice and flexible there. And um, yeah, just let me just put this on so you can be able to see. So we can take out the little thumb screw here. I'll take the protective casing off of the lens and then I can just pop this in here just like that. It is a nice, good, perfect fit. And then I'll just stick that in there. Take this thumb screw, screw this in. And now it is sitting nice and perfect perfectly snug right there and since this is a 360 camera what I tend to do especially if I have this on my bike is kind of just bring it down like this so that it's more horizontal and tighten that down and then it just gives a uh, better perspective I think that way while still maintaining the whole 360 degree aspect of it so this is something that I actually did not have before I 3d printed it I would connect this to my bike using uh, some other means but I didn't have a way to connect it to my chest and especially not from like a GoPro type of a mount. So this is something that I think is very, very handy. And the whole thing about these prints, like I said earlier, they feel like plastic. They don't necessarily feel like resin. Maybe like when you get to the part where the supports were and it's a little bit rough, but the smooth surfaces and even like the way that they sound, they sound very close to plastic. Uh, so that is, uh, that's very, it's very cool because it, it feels good in the hand, you know? And of course, the heat deflection is going to be really useful as well with this being able to get up to almost boiling point temperatures before bad things start to happen. Um, but actually, I want to see what that's like. I'm going to take one of these backs here for the remote control since I have no use for it. And uh, let's expose it to some heat. So it's a brand new day, hence the wardrobe change. And now I want to test out the heat deflection with this particular resin. Now, I don't have any fancy tools, so I'm just going to do some caveman science here using the latest in Unga Bunga technology. This is an air fryer, the old school Ninja Foodi, the very first one that they had. And don't worry, I don't eat from this anymore. Um, it still works, but I don't eat from it. So don't worry about that. But basically... What I'm going to do is since this resin has a heat deflection temperature of 89 degrees Celsius, which is around 192 ish degrees Fahrenheit. What I'm going to do is pop this inside of this air fryer. Wait, before I do, let me just do some rough measurements here. I lost my calipers, but I'm just going to see basically like how wide this is. All right. So this is... A little bit more than an inch and a half. So I'm just going to take this, toss this in here, and I am going to put this on the dehydrate function. I actually used this to dry filament as well before, you know, I got proper filament dryers. And it starts at 150 degrees, but let's just kind of move this up. It goes from 180 to 195. Now, 195, that's a few degrees over what this resin is rated for. I'm gonna try that, but first, let me just take it down to 180 degrees Fahrenheit and hit start. And I'm just going to let this heat up. I'm gonna come back in maybe about 
10, 15 minutes or so. By then, everything should be up at that particular temperature. And we will see how that uh, back of that remote control is holding up in there. And then I'm going to bump it up to 195 degrees and see what happens from there. All right, so it's been at least 15 minutes, probably a little bit more than that. So let me just open this up and grab our part here. It is uh, quite warm. It is very warm, but it's not. Well, before I even try to bend it, let me just remeasure this again and see if it's around where it was before. And I know there's no close up on this, but, you know, just trust me on this. And like I said, a little bit more than an inch and a half. It's still there. I'm pretty much at the same point where it was before. Uh, so this is still in decent shape. It doesn't feel softer or anything like that. But that was only at 180 degrees. I'm going to pop this back in here and I'm going to bump it up to... Well, let me just stop this and see. Let's bump the temperature up to 195 degrees Fahrenheit. And um, just let that go for about 10, 15 minutes again and come back, do a little measurement and see how it's hold up, how it's held up after that. And I'm back. Let's take a look at this print now that has been cooking at 195 or uh, yeah, 195 degrees Fahrenheit. Oh, that's hot. That is hot. All right, let's take this out and do some rough measuring here. Well, it's pretty much where it was before. Like I said, like a little over one and a half inches. It, it hasn't moved so far. It hasn't moved. 195 degrees. I mean, hey, it still maintained its form. And... The rigidity seems like it's still there. Hey, man, I say that's pretty good. I know that this is not the most scientific way of going about doing this, but, you know, just based off this, it, it, it held up to that 195 degrees just fine. And considering that it's just a couple of degrees more than what it's rated for, I'm not surprised that it was able to hold up. And maybe if you just heated it up more and more and more, that's when you'll start to see some things happening. But uh, no need for that. We already got the limit. We met the limit. We went a little bit above the limit. So, hey, I'm fine with that. OK, so, you know, when I 3D print things, I don't usually do a lot of functional printing, like for parts and to withstand certain forces and things like that. I usually just 3D print things that are decorative in nature, that are fun, that are funny, and cute, and awesome looking. But it was nice to be able to use 3D printing for things that are just more functional for once. And um, this particular resin, I have been happy with the results and happy with the accuracy of them to help me make these different cases to put um, electronics into and to put my camera into and just a really unscientific way of throwing a part into something and heating it up and seeing what happens and measuring it and seeing that nothing changed. I mean, hey, seems like a win for me. But if you want to get down into the nitty gritty and the technical details about this particular resin from Hagers, I'll just leave a link down in the description and then you can go to their website and read all of the claims that they have for it. But uh, yeah, in my limited testing, everything has worked out pretty good. Just make sure that when you go to that raft setting, you tone it down negative 10% in case you have issues with it adhering to the plate a little bit too good. So that's going to do it for now. I want to thank you all so much for watching. Till next time, take care of yourselves and I'll speak to you soon.